Hello and welcome to the MicroOS install workshop or immutable desktop if you want to. Uh, my name is Lubosz Kotsman and I would like to guide you through the installation and some of the tasks that we've prepared for you to kind of get you familiar with the platform. The goal is uh, to show you some of the new concepts that you will be able to find in next generation next generation distribution from SUSE and uh, also next generation open SUSE stable. As you know, uh, after 15.5, uh, once 15.5 is EOL, which is roughly in two years from now, we plan to uh, move users to the new platform, right? Uh, so let's see how it could look like. One thing to just, just uh, mention in the beginning, we are basing this not on the ALP or Adaptable Linux platform that you may have heard about uh, because we don't have any, any prototype which would have desktop in it yet, but we are basing it on MicroS desktop, which is uh, kind of the closest to what you can expect in our next generation projects or products. So let's get started. I already downloaded the image, uh, but let me start from step zero, which is uh, the news open to the org article about the workshop. Um, today at uh, 16.30 UT, uh, sorry, CEST, uh, which is my time zone, or 14.30 UTC, you will you will actually be able to join the workshop uh, on the meetopensuse.org slash meeting. I believe it's mentioned in here. So just join the meeting, meetopensuse.org slash meeting. It's a Jitsi instance uh, where we can all uh, install it together, discuss issues, and go through through task list. Uh, the expectation is that you would stay at least a few days or a week on the platform, and then uh, after the workshop is over, um, we will meet again in a week on some sort of uh, yeah. I have a Lucid Spark uh, table which will serve us as a workshop where we can all collaborate and discuss what we did like, uh, what, was uh, what was blocking us from using it as a daily driver, um, and so on and so on. So feel free to join. If you are shy to speak up, don't worry, you can uh, basically work in the write-only uh, way. You don't have to speak up on the meeting itself. I will be screen sharing, so we'll be all able to see and brainstorm a little bit together about what are the areas that need attention and so on. Good. So we have the sheet open, as I've mentioned, it's in the document uh, references spreadsheet. There is a small task list that we've prepared for you. It's just for your own knowledge. Like we are not necessarily looking for bug like with this particular task or so. We just want you to be familiar with how to do X, Y, Z, and then, you know, try to enable you to use it as a daily driver for, for a week or so. So uh, task number one, install or we start from zero installation. So you are supposed to get micro as uh, desktop image from, from get open to the or keep in mind that this video is for Intel. If you want, uh, if you are using ARM or if you plan to install it on Raspberry or similar, um, then uh, Dan Chermak has a video. Maybe you will not be able to do uh, all the tasks, but uh, he's, he will guide you through how to do as most as you can on the Raspberry. So let's focus on the Intel. So go to get open to the org as mentioned here, or you can use the URL micro s download, go for the ISO image and download it. I already did it, so it's here booted. And uh, the task is basically to install it. So I will use the defaults. Uh, if you don't like SNX, you can go for uh, up armor, which is also an option. You can also please add yourself to the list, just like I did. And if you are doing something different, or if you, for example, um, if you know about better way how to do X, Y, Z, feel free to tell us. Uh, you can use it also as sort of feedback loop here. Uh, but like still, we would really appreciate if you would join the workshop session. And I mean like the feedback session. Uh, again, if you do the task, mark it as okay. If you skip something, it's perfectly fine to skip it. Uh, I did try to use hints such as, let me just click here so we do not lose time. Uh, I'm using GNOME, you can use KDE if you want to, but the, the, the workshop uh, or set of tasks is really uh, GNOME oriented, but like use whatever you like. Just need to maybe adapt the task in your mind to, to work for KDE use case. So you see here it says Linux, you can go for App Armor if you want to. Some people did so in the, uh, you can see it in the comments of others. 
And every time when you do the task, just, just hit OK. So you can continue next time where you end it. Um, entire set of tasks should be doable within, let's say, half an hour. The installation takes a few minutes, depends on your connection. I'm installing it in VM. Uh, otherwise, I'm using micro as desktop uh, as my daily driver for maybe third week now. It's perfectly fine. I can do uh, all of the tasks um, that I need to do in my daily life of release engineer for Leap. Uh, release manager for Leap, sorry. So we can see that I'm cheating. Uh, the While we are having the installation, the tasks are separated into 10 categories, starting from installation, you know, the stuff that you usually have to go through when you install your system. So updating of the system, if you don't have the latest updates, uh, then we are showing users how to install software without reboot on transactional system. Um, because, you know, transactional usually, like what's meant is that, uh, sorry, we have transactional based immutable system, right? So we, you know, as an in transaction, we install all the changes into a new snapshot. And then uh, once you are actually, like once the installation or update is done, like you are actually expected to reboot into the new snapshot that contains the change. If something went wrong, you can actually trash it and use the previous snapshot. So there is always a working uh, snapshot, working snapshot of your system. But uh, there are some ways how to actually avoid like the reboot, right? So one way is to use flatpacks. We are installing them uh, users on the user side, not system wide. Here, um, we will show how to do it through CLI. And the other way how to do it is to use uh, to install stuff into a container, something like Toolbox, which uh, can be quite neat for you. Again, you don't have to reboot your system. Then we will actually get to transactional updates, which, as I mentioned, are using the snapshots, and you have to reboot to see changes. Then the next thing is changing the immutable OS because, as you may know, we are using read-only root partition here. So if you want to change something, if you need to, it, in many cases may not be a good idea, but there is some way we will show you how. Then some basics of using containers, like how do you, on, on similar system, which you know is expected to use more flatpacks and containers than ever before, how do you run something like Easy Apache uh, or, or Nginx in this case, like and an, an have web server. Then uh, we have a tech preview of the GDM, which is running in container. So we have completely decoupled the system. Uh, I mean, the graphical stack, uh, so you can actually exchange it completely without reboot, uh, which is currently problematic. Uh, so there is a optional task for you. Then, you know, something, how to build flatbacks in OBS. There is a nice tutorial. So if you, if you are up for it, you can test it. It takes like a few minutes. And then, uh, as I've mentioned, we will have two feedback loops uh, with the Lucid Spark whiteboard. And one will be on 9th of August, which is in a week from now. Same slot, same meet open org slash meeting. Uh, and the other one is on Thursday, I feel. Yeah, this is, this is a little bit more friendly to the people from the Western Hemisphere. And uh, this uh, will be yeah, held on Thursday 11th at uh, 7 p.m. UTC time. So um, I see that we have only a few packages left, so we are almost done with the installation. Uh, after the installation, you will have the GNOME initial step executed to actually create like initial user for you. So we did set root password here in, in the installer, but the rest will be done through GNOME initial setup. That's something that I would like to add to Leap as well uh, with the self-install media, because I feel like this is an easy way how to give somebody maybe pre-installed laptop and they can just create users as they like. Okay, last 200 packages. Again, uh, I've mentioned it, but tasks are categorized uh, high uh, by the priority high means like we highly recommend you to test something medium. It's like, yeah, you know, it's optional. For example, here we already have a uh, browser pre-installed in the micro as desktop. It's the Firefox, it comes from Flatback, uh, Flatpack, Flathub as a Flatpack. It's installed, uh, again, as I've mentioned, uh, user side. So not system-wide, uh, which is why for additional installations, you will mostly not need root password, which is pretty nice. And... Uh, if it's low, then you know it's up to you. It's still good to go through task descriptions to see how you would do it if you would be doing it. Uh, 
which will help you on your journey with uh, such platform. Big, uh, an important step, if you would decide to skip it, is actually joining the uh, Telegram channel, open to the micro as desktop, which currently acts as the best place to get some support from community. If you if you have some questions that you would like to a get answered, definitely join the open to the micro as desktop group. We will install Element Metrics Client, which people like to use with all of our IRC channels, Telegram and Metrics Bridge, um, which is all bridge to metrics. And uh, an element is a metrics client, so as part of the example, you can use whatever you want. If you want to use Telegram client, feel free to use so. So we are almost done with the installation, just saving the settings and followed by a reboot. So once you're done with the installation, just type OK like I did so in your column. Also, please describe like, uh, unless it's super secret, uh, what sort of hardware are you using? You know, something like VirtualBox or Vertman uh, or KVM or I don't know, some type of laptop is, is perfectly sufficient. Again, if you have any comments, see how others are doing it. So here, um, the next task class after reboot and some of the user side software will be installed like on, as part of the first boot experience. Um, there's a task to update your system. You may want to do this task like in a week or so, like or a few days, because you've most likely just downloaded the latest image, uh, which has the latest software available. But like the important part is to know how to do it. Uh, the original plan was to show it through GNOME software, but that's, um, that system update specifically that um, the task is about is not like fully implemented for our cause. So uh, this is what we recommend users to run, transactional update up. Keep in mind that MicroS desktop is transactional based on the, on the regular release. Uh, you would do transactional update period. And uh, yeah, okay, so GNOME is set up. Let's go over it defaults. Yeah, okay, let me move it a little bit or increase it. Good, next. I am located in Czech Republic, so let's do prank. Next. Skipping online accounts, Lubosh, spam. Next, I will use it for a simple password for the VM. As I've mentioned, otherwise I'm running micro as uh, desktop here as my main OS. Uh, cool. So now we are installing the, um, this is actually really cool. Um, Richard, I think, integrated or created mod first boot to the GNOME branding package, which uh, install, it's a, it's a simple script that installs additional software. Um, I like the way how it's done, especially if you tweak uh, the image and, and you can you know install whatever you want for your company, for example. Cool. So I will open terminal here. Meanwhile, as as the uh, Firefox and other software is being installed, and we will be doing the update. So right now there is nothing, but I still want to. Uh, the DVD agent will work and copy paste in between VM and host will work. Yeah, it does, which is good. So let's wait for this to finish because we are installing clubbacks and then let's run the update. Again, as mentioned, uh, run it in a few days if you can. This is just for demonstration purpose. So open software. Well, we can wait, I guess. <laughs> I 
otherwise uh, while we are still doing the installation part I uh, there is a documentation that you can follow most of the docs are here as mentioned in the comments uh, there is also a video from Richard if you want to hear more details this is not about details this is really to set you up really quickly so you can use it and uh, it's more like feedback loop right really how do you how did you like using it maybe you are afraid of the new concept but in the end it worked out well, you know, we want to hear that as well. Cool, so the flatback part is done, at least the, or the first boot part is done. Let's do updates. I, as mentioned, uh, I expect no updates because we just freshly installed it from the latest media. Yeah, done. So we don't have to reboot. If you see any updates, like specifically on the OS side, flatpacks, you don't have to reboot. But on the OS, uh, well, with flatpacks, I would recommend to at least log out. But the OS update uh, is actually, you have to reboot to the new snapshot to get the updates. Huh? I mean, like to take effect. Good, so we are done. So again, like type OK, right? Uh, done, no updates if you want to hear what, what's, the, what's the next task. So install your preferred browser. I'm skipping this one, otherwise just run software. Because I'm perfectly fine with Firefox here. Otherwise I did install Chrome here. Um, so you can just, like, if you want Chromium, whatever you want, uh, mm -hmm. feel free to install it. Ideally, please install it from FlatHub uh, by default. Uh, it always offers RPM if it's uh, available, like, part of the, right? Like, if we wouldn't be asking for our next-gen workshop if we would just let you install everything as RPM. The idea is to actually get in touch with some new text, so please make sure that it's uh, from FlatHub. And right, so you can install it if you want to. I will skip it and I will install the additional software here. Um, so this is interesting task, even with a low priority. I really wanted to show you how to do it from command line. Uh, the important part is dash dash user. It's really two dashes as mentioned in the task. You don't have to be root for, for doing so, because again, it's not system wide. Just type yes. And we have RG edit which is flatback based. You could install it from RPM as well if you would like to, but again, we are trying it against stuff, right? Good, done. So now if I run gedit, oh, come on. Yeah, it's there already. Good. It's going to be the one from flatback. Cool. So you can type OK. Again, if you're done with the task, I already did so on my system that I'm using for recording element metrics client. So I will, yeah, let's do it. Uh, because I really want to make sure that you get your hands on that one. Also, you can just look for this uh, software here. You know, GNOME software will get you to the install page. Again, please make sure it's from FedHub here. The ALP itself may very like uh, provide a software from some sort of OBS repository. Uh, this is not the case yet, uh, so stay tuned. At least this is what I've heard from initial di uh, discussion. So let's open it. And uh, otherwise, I already have element on my main system as well. Right, this is the channel which you are supposed to join here in the next task which, you know, there you can get some support, uh, so sign in. Um, use the OpenSUSE, sorry, metrics OpenSUSE org, and then continue with OpenSUSE login as you are used to. It will get you to, yeah, browser and our SSO. I think this is actually my password for here. Yeah, continue. Open link, which will get you to here. And you are logged in. Make sure to join the micro as desktop. I couldn't log you in. Okay. Maybe because I'm already logged in. Oh, now it worked. Okay, so make sure to join the uh, micro as desktop, which I'm already in. I think that's one of the tasks here. Yes. Um, 
you can also join like OpenSUSE project, which is RC channel from this clan. It covers everything that's bridged to the metric server, RC, Telegram, Discord, and any other channels that you like to. Uh, you can see that I'm in plenty of them. Right, so we've basically covered these tasks. So again, like mark them as done once you're done. Install Evolution Client. I keep it low, so I will skip these. Same for the uh, VLC or GNOME. Uh, videos i leave that completely to you uh, as you like maybe you like different player here the interesting part so um as you've heard like um we are using transactional update here which is still software into new uh, btrfs snapshot or system snapshot you know which is based on btrfs snapshots and uh, in order to actually see the changes you have to reboot into the new snapshots but you, there is a way how you can skip it. So one is like flat packs, as you've seen now. The other option is to actually run toolbox. So uh, here we mentioned toolbox enter. So let's do toolbox enter, which will fetch a, um, I believe it's with based container in our case. And that will be technically your second shell where you can just install whatever software you want as RPMs. Uh, since it's container, it's sort of isolated from the system, but like the container has uh, access to the local file system so you can work with it as you know as a regular user having access to your data which is pretty cool and you don't you don't have to be afraid that you would mess up your system with some unwanted software for example cool so we are part of the container next task would be to zip run zipper install all git open to the release tools rpm dev tools so this is software which would be used for packagers for example so let me just paste it here. Yes, it's Tumbleweed based on the repositories. And uh, you can actually see the difference of your installing it here, right? Let's give it a few seconds. So otherwise, Git is not available on the system. If you would like to install it, you have to use transactional update package install, which is also part of the exercise later. Here it's actually installing quite a lot of software to get Git and the other Python stuff for the open release tools like OSC. And you know, like you can keep it isolated from your uh, system if you want to work with Git and stuff. You can keep it like in some sort of container, like you can keep other containers for other stuff and have some nice, nicely isolated environments for, for your experiments. Cool. So we are here. You can see that Git is available here. Well, uh, you know, I can maybe kill this one, open new terminal, run Git. You can see it's not available system-wide. If I do exit from this one, I get it's not there. If I enter again, I, I can access Git. Um, so one of the tasks here is to actually check out something like landing page. I believe we can do git clone and this is a web page but I think if I just do git like it will work yeah correct and you can see that I've checked it out into my home directory right which is also available system wide here but here I don't have git well here I do perfect so you can leave the toolbox right by running exit and you can enter it again like uh, it's quick once the container is pulled so now it's just a matter of a second so we've covered these tasks so mark them as okay uh, right here we have transactional update based installation so as you know i was putting this task list together once i've installed like the micros desktop from scratch so whatever I needed, like mount USB drive, I just said, well, let's do, let's let's show you how to do that. So here we are actually installing RPM, uh, and it's NTFS 3G. So for uh, yeah, let's get away from the toolbox, and we are using. Trend, uh, let's actually look look up the software first, right? So we, for that you can use zipper search as you are used to from traditional software search, and we are looking for NTFS 3G. I think I'm using test here as a password. Yeah, right. So, and then sudo transactional update package install ntfs 3 g So you have to reboot to take changes uh, into place because again, as mentioned, it's going to be in a, in a new snapshot. So sudo reboot. 
I, I can imagine that the amount of reboots initially done to set up the system could be quite high, but like once you're done, like I better reboot, like I keep this system up for a week. See, and the reboot is quite quick, it's a really small system. That's cool. So we are done. Like if I if the USB redirection would be working in flatback based uh, GNOME boxes, I would show you how it mounts the USB drive. I believe uh, I have the USB drive here. So I can yeah. Did it mount? And this is on my system, right? So this works. Should be my NTFS formatted drive. But it's not in the VM. Cool. Uh, so we are done here. Again, reboot. We did reboot. NTFS is auto mounted. It was auto mounted, but not in my VM. Uh, now altering immutable system. And this is quite cool because I didn't know that you can actually do it like this. I was really actually mounting, remounting the snapshot in some different partition and so on. I mean, in different mount point and then altering it, changing the read only attribute, but uh, you can do it really easily. So just run transaction update shell and that's it. So now you will get actually a shell where you can touch like everything. So if you do touch A, for example, on sudo touch A, just to make sure there's a permission issue, you will get still can't touch. And here in the snapshot, you can, like everything is read right. And, uh, so we are done, so just type exit. If you are done with your work on the, you know, it's it's good idea. If you would mess up your system with any local changes that you've done, you can just reboot to the previous snapshot, right? So unless we reboot, like, uh, we are fine. After reboot, you can always go down to previous snapshot, like you can do here, right, with some older version. So, but I will just reboot to the new snapshot, which will already contain that slash A which would not be pre uh, available before the reboot. So again, I appreciate the really quick startup. It's pretty cool. Even for VM on real hardware, it's actually even faster. Cool. And so now I guess the LS, A, yeah, it's there. Cool. Now, if I would like to do RM slash A, I can't because it's read only, right? Yeah. Cool. So we've covered this part. So again, mark it as okay in your section, right? And now we are actually doing the container experiment. So here I was thinking like, okay, so if you didn't, maybe you didn't work with containers before. So I was thinking, well, people usually have some sort of lump installed on their machine, like, but how to make it really easy? So it's just copy paste. So here in this demo, you will run Nginx server, which is a simple HTTP server. And, uh, you know, we will basically uh, pass the, again, just like for the toolbox, the local, you know, some directories to the container so we can tweak, uh, tweak the files on our side, like without being in the container while the service will be decoupled from the system, right? Running in the container. So there is a nice how-to that you can just follow. Follow. I did update it to work with micro SD desktop uh, using SC Linux. So uh, keep in mind that yeah, if you use up armor, maybe you need to do something differently. Maybe you can just remove that Z, which tells Podman to relabel the directories. Um, but yeah, okay, so we want to create uh, the directories that will be shared. Like you can create them wherever you like. I was just following the, the wiki page, which was using these. So that's why I use them as well. Again, if you are not running as Linux, maybe you don't need that Z part. Uh, well, maybe you don't. Um, I'm not sure if you need something additional for App Armor. So now Podman will basically reable directories. It will actually make them available as Podman volumes to the container. It will redirect uh, host port 80. If you don't want to use sudo, you can use something like 8080, some non-privileged port. And the same for HTTPS, or you can skip the H uh, HTTPS. And uh, yeah, it will work. Otherwise, more details in the wiki. So I will just use default instructions. Oh, I didn't paste the second line. Okay. Well, it's not second line. It's really just very long time, very long line here. And the uh, container on the startup will actually populate these directories, which are otherwise empty. You can see before. Well, now maybe it will be already populated because the container started. Yeah. Okay. It already, it was faster than I was, but it's actually populating the directories that we've passed. 
So we have an nginx running, so you can see the next task is actually saying, well, part of the task is saying visit localhost, right, in the browser. So we want to do localhost, which should show us some welcome screen of LGNX, nginx. Cool. And the next task is just to tweak it locally again, not in the container, right? Also, I'm running the nginx as not daemon, so I didn't pass dash, uh, dash d to putman, but you can do that. Article should suggest to do so, but in this case, you get like std error and std out on the on the terminal which is useful um especially if you are debugging a linux so yeah let's go to srv what's the directory srv nginx it should do i think that we've passed right and there is the index html which has this content so again i'm doing it as uh, as user on my machine if you if you don't you know you can share it from your home directory and then you don't have root permissions, welcome to, well, let's do Ahoy because we are pirates, right? And like I've done it, right? I didn't go to the container C container, kind of uh, the service took the change. You can, you can see that it already took place, which is good. So this is a way how you can run services like uh, Apache and so on in, in container while you can still work with the data locally, which is pretty cool for any sort of development purposes, right? Uh, and then there is the tech preview uh, for the GDM in the container to, to completely decouple like the graphical stack from the system so you don't have to use transaction updates to update it, but you can just update container content, exchange it, uh, and switch it without reboot, which is more to traditional experience that users have, right? Um, so feel free to do so. There is a nice readme that you can follow. It's about install additional software installation. So I suppose rendering in this case means something a transaction update, install, package install, and then these. And uh, support man is already available in micro as desktop, so you don't have to install that one. But the rest, I believe, you need to you need to do set enforce permissive to uh, to switch to permissive mode. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I guess uh, this still needs to be worked out, and then running this as root and so on, and you should be done. Uh, this is a low prior. It would be really nice to see what you think about it. It's a tech preview, right? That's that's why it's marked as optional. And then the next task, and I believe this is the last one, is actually to uh, build our Flatpak template. So this is really just just to show how you can you can use our OBS templates uh, for Flatpak in, in a few seconds. So let me just log in there, and it's also completely completely optional. But I can show you how it's easy. I believe that I for default to pack. Oh. Okay, wrong password. So. Yeah, now it's now I'm there. Oh, here, right? Good. I should be logged in already. Good. Uh, so if you scroll down, you will see templates for flatback. So choose that one. Just click create. I believe that I already did so, so nothing happened. I, it's already built. Otherwise, wait a few minutes until the Tumbleweed one is built, like you are running Tumbleweed, so probably this is the one that you want to use. But in fact, it doesn't matter, right? It's Flatpak, so that's the beauty of it. And uh, the software that we are using as an example is Machio, which is a game, right? And you can check how like such spec for it looks like. So it's usually YAML or or you know JSON, which is a subset of YAML, in fact. And right, and then you can download it uh, once it's built. For us, that already happened. So I will just download this file. And then you can install it. Flatpak uh, install dash dash user just like you are used to and point to the local file, which will be, in my opinion, in downloads. Uh, correct, yeah. And then work. There you go. And you did install it. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I think that we wanted to do no, but yeah, okay. <laughs> you could just install the local one, so we did install the remote one. Um, let me edit the instructions before. <laughs> oh, just be careful to not 
answer yes when <laughs> you are prom prompted to install it from Flood Help. <laughs> Good. Lessons learned and I guess Dog Store improved. Let me remove it afterwards and then we can redo it. So, yeah. That would be flat pack remove, I guess, something like this. Okay, can I just maybe mention something like Orbital Mahyong? Yes. And then uh, install the user. No. Yes, proceed with changes, right? Okay. Well, in this case, that. It was quick. Cool. And uh, since we are done with the tutorial, I would like to ask you to join one of the sessions either on 9th of August or uh, 11. 9th of August is the same time slot as now. 11 is uh, here, it's uh, 7 p.m. UTC, which is roughly 9 p.m. CST. It's more Western friendly. Uh, slot so feel free to see us again we will use the workshop to to hear from you we don't want to hear like how did these tasks go that you've tried because we basically know the experience it was more for show of, of how to do xyz and uh, we really want to hear like uh, what have you been like doing and maybe what was blocking you from using it as your daily uh, driver like machine that you know that you use as your primary machine and if you can't use it as a primary machine, maybe install it on secondary laptop. If you have something around, try to use it task, like what was generally blocking you from using it. We want to hear that. And if you appreciated something, tell us too. Like that's that's actually the feedback which always makes our heart hearts melt. So we want to hear that as well. And if you are a little bit shy, don't worry, like I will be doing screen sharing. Everybody gets the link to this workshop and you can work, you can type, you don't have to speak up. And it can be fully anonymous if you choose to, which is fine. So talk to you in a week or in, uh, what is it, 11 days, based on what suits you better. Thank you very much and I'll be looking forward to hear from you.